right, guys, we're back with another episode of LBO's podcast, Growing Pains. I'm here with a friend of mine, a colleague at Florida Southern College, Justin Heacock. What's going on, dude? How are you today? Great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited for you to be here. Uh, if you guys don't know Justin and his story, it's really inspiring. It's really incredible what you're doing at Florida Southern for students, and you've been doing it for a while now. So um, for people that don't know you and your story in the educational space, why don't you just give us a brief backstory and tell us where you're from and how you came to Florida Southern now. Yeah. So high level, my kind of you know two-minute pitch of myself is I'm a Lakeland native. And essentially where I'm at at Florida Southern is I'm trying to fix everything I didn't like in my undergrad and master's. My background's kind of unique. I've done a few startups myself, some tech ones. I'm onto a consumer product right now around shower wall hair of all things. But really my background's kind of been in the incubation space. I've worked with about 450 startups value now over $100 million. Wow. But really the reason why I came to Florida Southern is there's an opportunity to improve entrepreneurial education in academia and hopefully unlock the next innovation uh, potential for these organizations. So I'm trying to be a little entrepreneur inside the academic space. Yeah. It's not easy, but I've been fighting that battle probably, you know, about the last six years. Before this, I was at Florida Poly for five years. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have some some interesting experiences along that. No, yeah, that's so amazing. Yeah, we talked off air about that word entrepreneur. So I'll, I want to dive in that. But, um, you know, one thing that is really cool, I got introduced to you through a student. Um, through one, you know, as we were doing interviews, you guys had, you know, uh, events at Florida Southern that promote just getting people and getting students involved and getting them in, uh, introduced to business owners. And um, our team there, we got introduced, we uh, met some professors, I got connected with you. Uh, and just hearing what you are doing for students at Florida Southern and pr providing a, a roadmap, you're, you're, you're paving a, a way for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to create something, to create a legacy, to make something of their own. And that's not something that many colleges here are quite doing yet. So um, it's very innovative. So um, talk a little bit about exactly what you do for the entrepreneurs at Florida Southern so people understand yeah. just because you're creating a whole department, right? It, it's brand new. Yeah. So the exciting thing at a high level Florida Southern is really big on experiential education. And so for those of you who don't know kind of the academic space, there's kind of two sides of the universities and colleges. You have like the research focused universities. You can think UF, Florida, you know, Florida State, USF, UCF. Those are kind of your typical like R1s or major research driven institutions. Like more science based, would you yeah. say? Yeah. So those are ones that they their success driven is on amount of publications, amount of grant money given and try to do as much cutting edge research as possible. Mm -hmm. The other side of the coin are teaching colleges and universities. And so Florida Southern, they said, one of our emphasis is on the experience that we give students in teaching. And so the exciting thing to be at Florida Southern is if you think of what entrepreneurship is, it's the ultimate form of experiential education. Absolutely. Because, and my favorite way of how I talk about it, it's about really it's helping students understand how do you take your major specific skill set and fit it into the world. So it's how do I say, all right, I'm a marketing major. What does my role look like in a venture, right? In starting a business? Well, that basically has to go into every single thing from, you know, the product development side to even the HR to legal, to the financial side, every single thing. Yep. And entrepreneurship is really just how you fit that skill set into every single thing else, right? And so that's the ultimate form of experiential education. And to your point earlier, I started Floor Southern in, in this August, so August 2020, 2021, actually. And before this, they had the Center for Free Enterprise. And my role when I came in was to add the entrepreneurship side. So the free enterprise is the why. Why does it matter to our economy, to our society? But now it's the Center for Free Enterprise and Entrepreneurship. And my role is to add the how. So we tell the story and the philosophy of why the free enterprise, free market matters. But the entrepreneurship side is, all right, now go do it. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to work with students to show them how do you go from a raw idea to actually a scalable business. And everything through that process is experiential. And that's something I love to do is kind of their entrepreneur in residence. Yeah. I mean, that. It, I mean, honestly, it's really amazing because as a former student, right, alum, uh, I went to college, I got my master's. But when I started a business... That's when I really applied what I learned. You know, you don't work as hard as you have ever worked until your back's against the wall, and you have to, right? So, you know, going through that experience, I think, is great for students at such a young, such a young age. No matter what you do, you're getting you're gaining skills that'll be applicable no matter what. 
um, cause you're going to be learning at such a high pace and you know, it matters so much more. Yeah. So, you know, you have a wealth of knowledge. You've worked with over 400, you know, startups yeah. and students that have led those. So, you know, one of my core missions with LBO was to help have a, a bridge mm-hmm. from the students to have resources to business owners and to help businesses here in Lakeland grow. So I think I really am passionate for what you're doing. So for a student that may be listening or for students that are going to be listening, what would you tell someone who, you know, is in school, has a good idea, but, you know, just hasn't kind of developed that yet and they're at Florida Southern? Like, what can they come to you? Like, what, what are the options for them? Yeah, so definitely if they're at Florida Southern, I would say get connected. And I would say that to any student. So, I mean, part of my mission being a Lakeland native is try to help connect the ecosystem overall. So whether you're someone at Southeastern, whether you're at Polk State, Kaiser, Florida Poly, wherever, there's different entrepreneurial support partners, whether it's like Catapult, whether it's The Well, whether it's us as a center. Sure. You know, it's just getting connected. And the exciting thing is we all work together so that way we can find you the appropriate resources for where you need to go. Right. But the other thing I say to students a lot is, you know, don't rush in terms of my success has to be right now. Right. And the interesting thing with entrepreneurial students is a lot of times what I use is it's all about authenticity and altruism. So it's like be genuine with me and help me change the world. So that passion resonates with students so tremendously. And when you actually help them, you can make a meaningful impact in their lives. But a lot of times students like that think, all right, this is my idea. It has to be now. This is all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And research actually shows us that most entrepreneurs aren't going to be successful until their early 30s. And so when you're in your 20s, I tell every student, you know, it's really about getting as much and as many skills as possible. So if you can go through and do a startup when you're 20 to 23 and do another one when you're 23 or 26, another one 26, 29, you can have three startups that you've gone through Um, experience and fail fast and fail cheap and by just thinking about the amount of skills you can learn so by the time when you're 30 and you have enough knowledge enough resources enough connections to actually make it happen yeah you're ready to run absolutely but that's so true and that's from a relatable experience too like you know when you're young and ambitious you have so many ideas like I had two or three business ideas before you know the ones that actually worked you know had success so like I failed forward just like you know as you said I think it's so important and like even if you are a student listening and you get a you know a sales job for your first year or two and then get into the marketing department somewhere you're still gaining skills that could be applied to something else down the road so I think it's very important you know as you said not to compare yourself to others and yeah. Just continue to grow within yourself. So, so I think I think a good model on that, right, is the goal here when people look at entrepreneurial programs, a lot of times it's easy to be like, oh, your success is, hey, how many startups really launched? Like how many seniors were having a self-sustaining business by the time they graduated? And that's not really the goal. The goal is trying to be empowerment. The goal is trying to create them to be change agents in the world. And I have that growth mindset and learn throughout their entire life. Right. Yes. So yeah. that's fundamentally really what we're focusing on. And all that matters is that they have that perspective and go through that process. Right. So with that, you know, even, and we know this too, majority of our students are still going to get jobs when they graduate. Guess what? That's okay. I just tell them it's either, you know, <laughs> either you're basically paying yourself to learn or someone's paying you to learn. So if someone's paying you to learn, that's a job and you still get to learn the same basics as any business is how does a business run? How do you make products? How do you manage people? Versus you trying to teach yourself everything. And so that's just another way to look at it is whatever you do, just make sure you're gathering as much skills as you can. Yeah, I could not agree more. It's kind of equatable to sports. You know, like, you know, you're a top draft pick or something. Like, you're either going to go right into, like, playing games or you're going to learn underneath a starting quarterback and, like, understand how Tom Brady operates and how he studies film and all the other things that are applicable to business that, you know, we just see the surface level. Right. Yeah. There's so many things that are involved and you are go- going to gain skills that are are applied in other ways. So it's very important. So talk a little bit, Justin, about your past. So, you know, you yeah. were at Florida Poly, right? Yeah. Um, which is an incredible a, a college and university in, in Lakeland still. Um, it's a little bit more of the tech space, right? Yeah. So for people who aren't familiar with Florida Poly and especially what you did there, why don't you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So Florida Poly, I got there around 2016 when it was about two years old. And we would joke at the time, oh, it's a $300 million startup. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's incredible space. Yeah. yeah. So, for those of you who haven't been or engaged in the university, please go, please go get engaged. It's very, very unique. Um, 
the interesting part with it, you know, I mean, universities don't start up often. That was once in a generational opportunity. So I was able to take that role where I was running their entrepreneurship program to basically try to create something new and unique, right? And that's part of the interesting thing with my background is most people in my position teaching about entrepreneurship, almost every person I interact with is like, you're really young to be doing that, right? And, <laughs> and it's true, you know, I'm 32. And the funny thing, most people that you see like teach this are probably in their late 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, I did this, I sold a business, now I'm here to talk to you about it. And so my interest, which is kind of one of the things, reason why I'm good at it is, you know, I'm still doing it, still practicing it. I understand what it means to start a business in today's age. But so when I was at Florida Poly, just to go back to that point, the interesting opportunity there, I mean, it's it's brand new institution. And so I looked at as an avenue of trying to create the different ways of supporting entrepreneurs, you know, in the academic university setting. Mm -hmm. So my mission there is we ended up creating a software called the Phoenix Nest, which essentially was kind of a decentralized incubator platform that would aggregate kind of the innovation ecosystem at a university for the first time. Hmm. To reframe all that fancy words, what do I mean basically is when you're a student at a university or college and you want to start something, you generally go to the professors you know, your department, whoever, and say, hey, I want to do this thing. Do you know anyone that's in graph design? Do you know anyone know in engineering, computer science, wherever, who can help me? And they typically don't know just because universities and colleges are very siloed. So what we did is we actually built a software for the first time that allowed a student to get access to all the resources on campus, meaning, hey, there's this lab that has this equipment here. Here's how you access it. We allow them to have a way to basically like kind of a teammate job board say, hey, I have this idea. I'm looking for these skills in this way. Hmm. And we had them a way to actually capture their ideas that they wanted to store and then move their ideas through basically an education process that allowed them to kind of evolve the ideas. Wow. So we had a third of our students on the software. We actually went to a conference in 2019 called the Global Consortium of Entrepreneurship Centers. It was in Sweden. It was a really cool experience. It's amazing, yeah. And we actually got Florida Poly to tie Harvard as a finalist for what we were doing around interdisciplinary entrepreneurship engagement. That's incredible. So that's one of the highest. Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. Literally, yeah, it was amazing. We were literally there with Texas A&M, Penn State. Harvard, Florida State, and little old, like four or five year old Polly oh, wow. going for this award because of the importance of it. Mm -hmm. So that's just the exciting thing for me. That was kind of the first stepping stone in me trying to be that entrepreneur in the academic setting. But that led me actually to the opportunity to evolve into Florida Center. So it, it's been a really interesting time at Florida Poly. Um, it really kind of helped start and launch my career in kind of the academic space. Yeah, and and yeah, and and we chatted just about your passion for Lakeland, right? Like, mm -hmm. obviously, Florida Southern is like you know you have a strong passion for that, but you really have an importance for growing Lakeland and the entrepreneurs here in Lakeland and connecting those people. Because obviously, if you're at Florida Poly or at you know Florida Southern, even you're traditionally in a niched environment, you know. You may not know science. You may not know how to create a product that you've envisioned. You need someone from, you know, from Florida Poly, or you need someone from Kaiser, or you know, some of those other opportunities. So, what do, you, how do you see that kind of coming together, and and what role do you view yourself playing in that? Yeah, I mean, I think an interesting question, and kind of the benefit Lakeland has from a Lakeland native perspective is, we definitely have a good culture here, a good sense of community. Like, it's a pretty welcoming community overall. And people talk about, you know, if you go to a bigger city, Tampa, Orlando, whatever it is, like you're a small fish in a big pond. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really hard to get noticed, really hard to make an impact. But when you come to Lakeland, there's a sense of camaraderie and community there. So we're in that great small medium range. Yep. And so in terms of where I want to go and kind of what, what keeps me up at night, it's kind of funny to think of, you know, entrepreneurship as like, all right. And, and I do this in the academic setting, but there's same thing in the community setting. It's like there's theoretically an opportunity to create the perfect startup team, right? You could do that at any college university. What if I took, you know, a business student with an engineering student, with an art student, a marketing student, and said, all right, guys, come together, find an idea, and go. That never happens in the academic setting. It drives me nuts. And so same thing in the community. is like, why can't we go there and have an engineer from Florida Poly, marketing student from Southeastern, business student from, you know, Florida Southern, and get all these people together and say, all right, let's create the ideal, you know, Lakeland community startups and see if they can build unique and scalable ventures. Yeah, 
That's so that's so awesome. I want to see that happen. Cause I, what there's six colleges here now in Lakeland, five or six, right? If yeah. I'm not mistaken, and there's there's so much talent here that are that goes untapped, and I think it's a big opportunity. So that word entrepreneur, what does that mean to you? Um, for people listening, like what is that? Because we yeah. talked a little bit about off air. I think it's a very interesting mm. uh, perspective. Yeah, so it's a term not many people know. <laughs> Because typically when people hear entrepreneurs, they think small business owners. Mm -hmm. And really a lot of it is about understanding the entrepreneurial mindset, which is like, how do you become a change agent in the world? And one of my favorite terms relating to that is how do you have a permissionless mindset? You know, how do you believe in yourself and belief in your ability to affect change, right? And not have per basically wait for permission from other people. So from an entrepreneur, it's kind of trying to be that same change agent inside existing organizations. So that's really what I'm trying to do inside academia. It's not easy, right? But it's, you know, ideally what every employee should strive for, what every boss should try to instill in their employees, because the more innovative they are, the more action oriented they are, that's the, where the impact comes from. And, and so for me, that's just how I describe it is trying to say, all right, you know, it's easy to do the same old, same old in academia. What can we do to be different? How do we think outside the box? How do we actually try to instead of just doing the same thing other schools have done that works, try to push the barrier to try to improve the student experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I think, it, you know, there's, and you develop over time too, right? So like, you know, I, I remember going being like 18, 19, 20 years old in college. Like I'm the much different person now that I'm 32, you know, like, mm -hmm. so as you have those life experiences and you go through your journey, you know, things change and evolve, but I think one big thing is tapping into the university that you're at and the people that are there and how can you be connected to have those interesting conversations that spark ideas. I think that's very important. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is just if you think of any college or university, the amount of intellectual capital there is astounding. Yeah. Right. I met, I literally was at Black and Brew Coffee Shop today. I was talked to Brian Hamilton. He's a philosophy, you know, PhD at Florida Southern. And I'm learning, you know, his whole background and expertise is on ethics and free will. And I'm like, how did I not know this? Yeah. Right? And there's so much of this untapped intellectual potential there, but because they're kind of siloed, they don't get kind of that opportunity to collaborate as often as they should. And that's just where I as an entrepreneur find it fascinating because I'm like, every one of these people has a story. They literally all are all true definition of the word experts in their field. Yeah. And I love saying, you know, what could we do to pull them together to create something bigger than themselves? Like the whole synergy kind of concept I, yeah. I love. So, so maybe that's a good segue into the C to scale program or initiative that you are leading at Florida Southern. So talk a little bit about that. What is involved in that? And how is it different than like most colleges and, and, and universities? Yeah. So the C to scale program is an interesting kind of continuation of my work at Florida Poly. So the foundation, like the opportunity I'm trying to chase inside academia is strictly just this, right? If you look at what most colleges and universities do across the country, they create basically their own business incubator. And this model had to have come out of just trying to copy basically the community incubators accelerator model, where they say, all right, the goal for you is to come out, come out, have a viable business that can actually produce your job by the time you graduate. And they said, all right, because of the programmatic effects and limited resources, we're only going to accept 20, 25 students. And congratulations, 2025, you're the most elite of our entrepreneurs. Congratulations, you get these resources, which is like space, mentorship, basically. And they say, hey, we'll check in in a year. I hope you do something. So that model is what most schools in the country do. You know, like when I was at USF, I ran their student incubator. It was 25 students. But the issue with all these is that there's 40,000 students on those campus campuses, right? Minimum. And literally with that, it's, they aren't even coming close to 1%. 1% of that population is 400. So they aren't really coming close at all to any meaningful impact across the board. So my whole mission for the last like probably six, seven years has been, well, what would it be like if you could capture and service every single idea at a university? Because theoretically you have so much of these decentralization happening that in fragmentation that no one really knows. Like you can't go to any university in the country and say, hey, tell me exactly how many projects come out of your classes, how many startups are happening. Like, and that's what fascinates me is if I can capture that and look at a true innovation potential of an organization, theoretically, you could have more innovation outcomes in a school the size of Florida Poly 
Florida Southern, Southeastern, then even schools like UF, just because UF doesn't have the infrastructure or mindset to capture the data. Right. And it's, I'd argue it's more intimate experience, mm -hmm. right? Like I've, I went to a larger public university and I went to a private uh, college. So I saw a big difference mm -hmm. in just how you engage with professors, how you connect with students. So um, what do you think is like a unique opportunity just at Florida Southern that you really were gravitated towards? Is it having that close knit kind of family like mindset or I know it's here in Lakeland and you add that and it's very powerful. Yeah. So essentially a lot of that is what we're trying to do with the C to scale program. So the hard part that always frustrates me in academia and, and entrepreneurial support is they do because it, I mean, it's it's natural because it's an easier way to scale is. So what they'll do is what I call a lot hands off entrepreneurial support where they'll say, all right, Tyler, congratulations. You have an idea. I'm going to connect you to a mentor. My job's done. I check the box. I helped you. Or they might say, hey, here's a workshop first Monday of every month. Go to that. And we'll check in in a year and I hope you do something. The problem that hands off model of support doesn't really do students justice when the whole thing is their authenticity and altruism. Be genuine with me and help me change the world. So what I've seen firsthand is if you go down to that level of students and say, hey, Tyler, let me see where you're at. Let's show you how to do this and coach them, which is really more my philosophy is more of a coach than a teacher mm -hmm. is to show you how I would do it as someone who's been through that before. And then it completely changes their trajectory of their education. So what we've done on that is we've created a program called C to scale that allows us to basically, it's a decentralized incubator. So if you think of what an incubator does, they say, all right, you get access to a space and you get like a chair and we'll basically connect you to our mentor and hopefully it works, right? What we're doing is we're saying, well, we don't really need access to space anymore because students can work anywhere, right? They really just need access to education. So we have three stages in ours. We have a seed, we have a build, and a scale. And the idea is that we can provide access to entrepreneurial education to any student across Florida Southern at any time. And this is something that we launch probably formally uh, about January of 2022. So it's live right now. I have about 32 startups in that currently right now. It's amazing. And the exciting thing for that is basically just saying, you know, because if, if you reframe it to look at an education first opportunity, then it's not saying, hey, I only need to deal with the 20 that are most serious. It's saying, I want to deal with, you know, the 2000 at Florida Southern that have an idea. And they're like, what could it look like to actually continue this into the world? So that's a lot of what we do. We want to provide them education because we should be an education first organization. Then depending on their level of effort and seriousness unlocks more tiers of resources. So it allows us as an organization to be very efficient in how we support them and also be very authentic and giving students experience they deserve. That's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about those 32 students because I know a couple that, that you've shared that have amazing business ideas and a few of them are actually working and are in the marketplace right now. So talk a little bit about some of those. Yeah, so probably one of the more success stories we've had already. So again, I've only been here since August, about eight months. We have a student, Brooke Learman. And she is CEO over CEO of Over the Shoulder. And this is the perfect use case of really what we're trying to accomplish at Florida Southern. So she had an idea to create a runner alert device for basically women runners to help monitor their surroundings when they run. So there's a statistic, I think it's like 80 something percent of women uh, report being harassed at least once while running, right? Whether it's being you know, whistled at or any of this stuff, like there's, there's a huge issue in terms of safety and kind of comfort for with women. So what she wanted to do is create a device that would watch basically over your shoulders and tell you, hey, is a person running up behind you? Is it a car? Is it an animal? And what is the distance? So that a woman can actually listen to your earphones and musics and enjoy some peace of mind while she runs. So this idea started when she was actually a freshman at Florida Southern. And we ended up, uh, so that was through actually freshman Shark Tank experience we have. She you know, passed that class, moved on. And then we actually picked her up in the CSL program. And so from that, we developed that idea further, got her into the build phase, and she's developed multiple prototypes of the, that is, those ideas. We actually partnered her with a student out, out of Florida Poly to build one, wow. which is really cool. It's amazing. But we've actually allowed her and taken her to state and local entrepreneurial competitions. So she was a statewide winner out of the USF um, Daveler Entrepreneurship Award competition. 
Uh, that was in fall of this year. And so she actually won $4,000 for that. And then she also has won, she ended up winning our TD Bank business plan competition with $10,000. And then she was also a Sharp Fellow where she got another $8,000. So this is a student, yeah, at Florida Southern that literally, because the idea she has is $22,000 to pursue her own idea. And you talk about an experiential education. How could you get better than that? Yeah. You literally have a bank account now that says, all right, go experience the world. See what you right. can do with product development with marketing and like customers and like manufacturing. Go, go do this. And a whole army of support behind her. You know, it's amazing. I mean, you go to, you go to school to get an education, but you're unlocking a whole nother opportunity. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like the pros, you know, yeah. you're going to graduate, but yes, but like, this is this is something that's life changing. Yeah. So what are uh, what what are some other ones that that are in there? One of my favorites. Uh, she's so nice, incredibly sweet. Is Claire Henry? So she actually we pay for her membership to go to Catapult. She is she operates and runs Purple Panda, which is kind of yeah. like an Asian themed ice cream company. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting because her background she was adopted from China, and she's using the story of ice cream and um, to basically rediscover her Asian roots. And so she is actually producing out of the basically culinary kitchen spot at Catapult. At Catapult. Wow. And she just got business certified and stuff as of like a week or two ago. We're trying to get her set up to do an ice cream social for our students before the semester ends. But it's really interesting because what she's trying to do is create essentially an experiential version of ice cream versus transactional. Yeah. So if you look at most ice cream businesses, it's come up, get your scoop, leave. Right? It's all and, about taste. Yeah, and so we talk a lot about what More does it money. mean yeah, to create a culture in a business. And we would love for her to be kind of a craft beer meets ice cream, where you go in there, you hear the story of the brewery, right? You get to meet one-on-one with like kind of the, the bartender, and they, they want you to hang out for a while and have a relationship. So that's a little bit of what she's trying to do with ice cream is build more through the culture, like a relationship version of ice cream. So you stay longer, you spend more. But also, it's a more unique experience. Yeah. So we're super excited. She's actually, she should be launching with product in the farmer's market here in the probably next month or so. That's so cool. That's so cool. So, I mean, 32 students in, what, six, eight months. I mean, it's pretty amazing. So where do you see that kind of going? Like, do you see, is it open enrollment for students? Or is it like, so it can be. Yeah. So a lot of what we do, the position here, which is kind of interesting, is we are kind of extracurricular. So my goal and that's the unique angle is we're trying to actually map out the innovation potential at Florida Southern for the first time. Yeah. So if you look at with Brooke Learman, she came out of that freshman Shark Tank experience. The issue is trying to figure out how many classes are there at Florida Southern that produce some project of substance mm-hmm. that students then could want to continue into, you know, an entrepreneurial project of some kind. Right. And so that's really where my whole first year has been is discovering those opportunities that allows us to build deeper partnerships. Mm-hmm. So we're starting with the school of business, like that freshman class, but the others, you know, like I found like Florida Southern has a class that actually helps students create and produce and launch their own um, single, like music single, mm. which is really interesting. Wow. Yeah. So there's like a ton of unique stuff. I also found a psych- like psychology course that actually has students pitch an idea as kind of like a business psychology experiment. And so there, there's tons of these like unique little classes that I'm discovering in like the little corners of Florida Southern that no one knows about before. Hmm. And so that's the whole idea is if we can go to them and say, hey, your students don't have to drop the idea after class, you know, when the semester's over. If they want to continue it, this process can catch them for the first time. Yeah. And so we're betting that if we do that, we can increase experiential education and also hopefully increase the data collected to prove, hey, Florida Southern's a very innovative and very unique place. If I have 32, literally just for me being there eight months, yes. give me a couple of years and hopefully that number will be over 100. Right. Absolutely. So. That's so awesome. I wish that would exist when I was a student. I'd probably be a mock. <laughs> but that's so cool, man. It really is. So uh, what is your background specifically, Justin, like as far as business world? Like you've created businesses, right? So why don't you talk a little bit about like exactly what you have done, what you're doing on that front? Yeah. So background kind of in business has been a little interesting. So. I did an undergrad and master's in entrepreneurship. So I'm also one of the few people that actually has degrees in it, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is good and bad because it was really funny going through that. And it's like, all right, well, there's no entrepreneurship jobs. What do you do with an entrepreneurship? Yeah. Degree? So, but my, my undergrad was a lot of fun because we actually started a gift basket business. I was kind of dipping my toes in the water for that. Mm-hmm. But really my first real venture was between my undergrad and master's. Like for two years we came out and 
we got paired up with some entrepreneurs in Lakeland and we did a, a company called Reveal Tracks. So it was an RFID inventory system for hospitals. Okay. And we actually did a joint venture with a company in Lakeland that was an RFID company, Franwell. And so the whole idea was basically, if you look at the surgical arena in hospitals, they have what's called a million dollar room, which is their knee, hip implants, skin grafts, everything that's high cost or expiration date sensitive. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do is basically slap a 20, 30 cent RFID tag on it, put antennas basically on the hallways and the inventory room and the surgery room and track it to basically say, hey, if it went to the surgery and didn't come back, we could theoretically tell it was used and automatically bill it to patients. Hmm. So, and it's the same technology in some past. So as your car drives through, you just think it's the exact same thing. So the crazy thing is we proved, like we had a working pilot and everything, you could do 99.9% .9 accuracy on like 300 plus tags in 30 minutes. And we proved that we could save hospitals 100 grand a year. Wow. What happened is we went to hospitals like in Regional, Morton Plant, Tampa General, and we're like, hey guys, we can save you 100 grand a year. Let's go. Like your inventory managers and charge nurses want this. And the CFOs were like, uh, no. Why? It, yeah, it was crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you tell me that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. How? So we even offered to pay them $5,000 to their foundation just to let us come in for free and pilot it. Wow. And they're still like, no. Wow. And so what happened is, which, which is really interesting, and that's the nuance in entrepreneurship, right, is we did the cardinal sin is we built something no one really wants. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying it's a bad idea. It's just we learned the hard way that the CFO has – you know, a list of 20, 25 problems that are mm -hmm. major. We are solving problem number 14 at a hundred grand a year and their top five costs them a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So there's only limited time and awareness these people can have. So that was a really interesting and really good lesson there to say, all right, even though you can build it technically, the economic sustainability was there. It's all about do people want it? Mm. That's the ultimate factor. Yeah. Right. So, so that was one of those, that was basically my two years before I master's. When I was at USF, we did another one around mobile cardiac rehabilitation. It was a nursing professor that basically, um, so cardiac rehab, for those you who don't know, if you have a heart attack, you basically are, should rehab your heart. Mm -hmm. So it's literally think of a gym, it's just a gym in a hospital, monitor your cardiac um, levels and try to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, you can prevent readmissions by I think it's like 50%. So there was a nursing PhD who wanted to say, all right, it costs 1800 to nine grand out of pocket to go through that program she's like that's crazy what if we literally put it on an apple watch charge people 20 bucks a month we can literally monitor your vitals and give you the you know training and education you need to go do those exercises we could save so much money or make a lot of money and also really help you know increase the accessibility of this for patients right turns out when we went through that so we, we did this process around something called national science foundation's i -Corps. So for basically six weeks, we did nothing but interview people. So the whole idea is instead of doing what I did in the um, RFID one, which is build it, then try you to You want to make it, sure that this yeah. is... Yeah. You, want to, you want to talk to people first to say, hey, is this really something worth doing? So it was really an interesting area. Like we talked to cardiologists and patients and then everyone else too. I'll talk about that in a second. But cardiologists and patients didn't care. Hmm. Cardiologists literally told us, they're like, oh yeah, that's nice. But um, my patients, they've been fine before. They don't need this. And here's a PhD in nursing saying, no, here's the research. This actually will reduce their emissions. Yeah. And these cardiologists are like, ah, it's fine. My patients haven't been dying. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, kid you not. So it was really interesting. So we realized the customers in that case would have been healthcare systems just because there was some changes in laws that would go to preventative care models for the first time. So, but it it's just shows you the point of complexity and entrepreneurship yeah like failure and success can come from a lot of different ways and part of its timing and it's well you always are hitting walls like it's like you're getting punched one way or the other even when things are going great for a period of time yeah something is going to happen you it's a matter of bouncing through it or figuring it out sometimes you don't and that's a learning lesson you know yeah. so 100 percent. and so so basically, I was over two on healthcare startups. Yeah, and I realized like I hate the healthcare. <laughs> like it's it's nice. It's just it's one of those that's so much red tape. There's so many different stakeholders. You got to get uh, it's just so many approvals and so many red tapes. And so that's why I'm, the business I'm starting now is called Shower Bun, and it's just it's a consumer product for shower wall hair. Mm -hmm. The reason why is strictly just because I want to control everything. I want to control my destiny. I want to get it completely to market where I can sell it to customers. And no one can stop yeah. me. Yeah. Yep. So the whole idea with that is just my wife has long curly hair. Mm -hmm. So whenever she washes her hair in the shower, she puts it on the wall. 
Yeah. And so we created the world's first self-cleaning shower wall hair device hmm. that allows you to run your fingers through and then you pop it off the wall and it self ejects the hair so you don't even have to touch it. Wow. So it's um we should be hopefully getting in like the product, the first run of that uh, this month, which would be exciting. That's awesome. But yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of my high level, like kind of entrepreneurial experience myself. Yeah. But it's been that, it's just been fun because that's kind of the applied side that allows me to have some very unique cases to help students, but also helping the students allows me to help other students because I have that broad perspective over probably the last 10 years doing this. Right. That's so unique, man. And that's a really cool idea. Are you going to be like pitching that, like trying to get... Yeah, yeah, trying to. I mean, like, so... The good thing is the business is about ready to launch with it. It's just trying to see how that goes. Like, it's one of those that, you know, I'm not, I, I like, there's been a lot of products that have worked around shower wall hair and failed. I just, I don't think it'll be, you know, like a million dollar idea, but it's something that just to go through the process completely from start to finish, right. is kind of like a life goal for me to be like, Hey, I actually created a business. I really launched that product. And it is something that I do think um, would be very unique because the only products in the market for that generally only hold your hair. They don't really have a utility for it. Hmm. So this is the only one that allows you to not touch it and to be self-cleaning. That That's really cool, man. Well, whenever this episode drops, yeah. maybe we'll do like a little hype video of you showing maybe the product. You may awesome. have one of yeah. But um, well, Justin, in closing, what are some things, you know, that you want to share that maybe upcoming for Florida Southern or upcoming for you personally? Um, that you want our viewers to maybe know about or just know that you're there as a resource for students even too? Yeah, so I would say uh, like probably the best thing for not only students, but just kind of the community to be aware of is you know what the Center for Free Enterprise and Entrepreneurship does. So the goal for us in terms of the community and what we play as an entrepreneurial support partner is we're really trying to be kind of the zero to one phase, right? So if you look at what Catapult is and a lot of the others, Catapult are really, really good at taking existing small businesses and growing them, right? right? They do really good efficiencies and kind of scale side of that venture. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we should do as a academic and education partner, we want to help you go from zero to one, right? So how do I go from, hey, I have a raw idea. What should I do to frame that out? What should I do to actually test this to see if I have market validation before I drop the 30 grand, 40, 50, 100, whatever, right. to actually get to market and build the thing? So that's really a lot of what we do and what we want students to know. So regardless whether you're at Southeastern, Florida Poly, Kaiser, wherever. So this is good for any student. Yeah, I mean, if they want to engage with us, that's the idea. Right. So, so just in terms of where I want to go as a center, we want to be able to have something like this that can pilot that process in the community for the first time and then go to the other schools and hopefully bring them in as partnerships to, to broaden that educational offering for students all throughout Lakeland. Because that's I believe so cool. if we can do that, we can have a more cohesive ecosystem that, you know, instead of say 50, whatever, hundred startups coming out of Florida Southern, now it's like 50, hundred from here, but then you include Southeastern, you include Florida Poly, Absolutely. Kaiser, Polk State, all of a sudden you're looking there and you're like, holy cow, Lakeland's producing like 250, 500 student startups mm -hmm. that are all doing unique things. They're all following a certain kind of um, innovation pathway. Absolutely. That's where I think Lakeland could really benefit long term. That's so cool. That's that, that. I mean, that gets me excited because not only this, the schools within themselves, but bringing the people in the same room, those students in the same room, I think is very important. So new ideas spark from that and are yeah. created. So and all that's going to impact Lakeland and impact Polk County. So it's all it's all for the benefit of the area and for the community. Yeah. And the, the thing I love, I think that's kind of an opportunity in Lakeland that you know, I definitely personally am pushing forward just because if you look at bigger communities, like USF hardly ever works with UT, right? And that's just the issue. Same thing probably with UCF and Rollins is the big schools in certain areas, like those communities are so big, people just stay in their little bubbles. Yeah. But if Lakeland can actively fight that and to say, no, like we're stronger together, what would it be like to create an experiential opportunity between all the colleges? That is how you create something that puts Lake on the map where Imagine having an outside investor or outside incubator, accelerator, whatever, come in here and look at it and say, holy cow, you guys have a connected ecosystem of five or six, you know, colleges and universities all producing along the same educational lines. Right. That's unheard of. No one's ever done that in the country. But if you do that, that's something I think that would just literally put Lakeland's ecosystem, like entrepreneurial ecosystem on steroids. Absolutely. And then that's like a, the foundational level for business growth here oh, yeah. in Lakeland. So like, I mean, you, you spark entrepreneurs here, make this entrepreneurial city, 
Um, it's, it's inevitable that businesses are created here, but businesses probably want to come here also for the talent. So, well, Justin, it's amazing what you're doing, man. I, I really am giving you kudos to that. It's really cool. I think it's an amazing experience that you're providing for students there and just the whole community. So um, thank you for coming on the show. I really am appreciative of it. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Tyler. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, guys, have a great day. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week on a new episode. Yeah.